All right, so this is a device that uh, sanitizes liquids. Um, by that I mean just takes all of the germs out of them. Uh, this is the compressed version, so like it's really, really confusing to look at, but it's only because I've crammed it all into a small space. Um, but this is uh, this is what it looks like when you cram it all into a small space. Um, it's uh, it will give you a throughput of one entire full pipe of liquid. Um, once it's once it's filled the reservoirs enough, you can just use this to set how much um, how much disease you're willing to let through. And I set it so that it's zero, so it takes out all of the all of the germs. And for my sandbox, I'm using let's see, I'm using polluted water with um, 1.2 million germs in it at the moment. I'm just I'm gonna have to tear this out so that I can show you guys what it looks like when it's not all crammed together like that. And it's um, it's actually fairly easy to set up. I just uh, I tried to do it with two liquid reservoirs and not three, but it just it just doesn't quite work. Um, you just it looks like you just have to have three. Um, so this reservoir feeds this reservoir, and this reservoir feeds this reservoir, and this reservoir um, gets checked to see if it doesn't have enough germs. And uh, of course, you can't just let it run straight through like this because oh, by the way, <laughs> the principle for how this works is that if you have a liquid reservoir in a room full of chlorine gas, um, then the chlorine gas will sanitize the liquids that are in the reservoir. And it doesn't work for things for liquids that are in pipes; it has to be in the reservoir. So. Um, when we're checking germs in this pipe to see if we can let the um, to see if we're done, uh, this pipe doesn't continue getting sanitized. Uh, so we need to put some kind of a loop in here to prevent um, the prevent the liquid from sitting in the pipe and having nothing happen. And so I'm just going to loop it back to go back in the reservoir. Um, in order to make that work, I'm going to put in a bridge. I'm not I'm not cramming the pipes together now, so you guys can see what this looks like. I'm going to keep it spread out enough. I'm going to stick a bridge in here to so that uh, you know to establish a direction for the liquids and I'm just going to put it right back into this and what you'll see will happen is um, it's sort of going to intentionally see it's going to go around this loop and we're having this intentional ratcheting of emotion. It means that both these two reservoirs will begin to fill because we're only getting half as much liquid in the first one as as a full flow and um, so the other half is ending up in the second one uh, the other half of that flow now there's another thing that'll happen like if we let this go long enough uh, this could get full this reservoir could get completely full and all the pipes will be completely full and then we'll have we'll, we will have reached a deadlock um, so we need some kind of relief some kind of release valve so that when this gets completely full there's sort of a, a, a a bypass to, to let something out so it doesn't get stuck because if it gets stuck liquids won't be going through this pipe and getting checked to see if we're done and it's actually um, it's a little unintuitive but it's not it's not so crazy I just do it like this <laughs> straight up straight up from that and nothing will go that that way believe it or not until the reservoir is full, which means liquids won't be able to go in right here, so they'll overflow into that, into there, and then go th over the bridge and out. Um, so where we're trying to go is this. What this will do when if, if liquids overflow and go into here is it'll create the exact same kind of ratcheting effect we have here that we like, except with this reservoir instead, which is exactly what we want. Now, this one might get completely full, so we need the exact same thing again. Um, just like this, and I, I routed the pipes a little different, but it's the exact same thing. It just goes to there. So as you can see, there's a pattern to this, and you could you could just follow this pattern and make like four or ten reservoirs, and it would be um, very very robust. <laughs> but you only you only need three. Like I, I tried very very hard to break it and put through the germiest water at the fastest speed and I could never there was nothing I could do to make it so I would need more than three. Alright there's super speed and let's just watch how this works and so I guess I'll I mean if you understand all of that then you're done you're done with this video congratulations go go make yourself a uh, you know one of these things um, but if you'd like me to talk more about it then then stick around I suppose and I will um, so it's hard to see this I'm gonna pause it it's hard to see this over here because it's moving around super fast but um, basically it says uh, we're at about 170,000 germs in this reservoir now this is that should be constant well I mean it might not be 170,000 but it will find an equilibrium and the reason is because the liquid going in each bubble has the exact same amount of germs and uh, and the reservoir 
cleans out the germs at kind of the same rate no matter how many germs are in it. And so it'll find a balance between the germs going in and the germs being killed and this number over here will stay basically constant. Um, the thing that's changing is how much water is in the reservoir. So like right now there's 2,500 kilograms of polluted water and in a minute there'll be 3,000 um, but there will still be the same number of germs. What that means is that the germs are getting diluted over a lot of, a lot of water so that when a bubble comes out of the reservoir it will have less germs um, than uh, well than a minute ago when there was much less water in, in the reservoir. Uh, now that's that is that phenomena is sort of the reason why this setup works. So if you imagine, now let's look at this reservoir over here. It's the exact same situation, the exact same situation where the amount of water is increasing in the reservoir, so the germs are getting more and more diluted. But not only is it exactly the same, but the bubbles going in, because remember the germs in this reservoir are getting diluted, the bubbles coming out of this reservoir and going into this reservoir are uh, in, have increasingly less germs. So not only should this number over here be fairly constant, just because it finds an equilibrium, but it should be decreasing because there's fewer and fewer germs entering the reservoir. So if we could just run that for long enough, like right now it's at 4,000, we could, well, I bet we can get down to 2,000 really quickly as this fills up. Moving around. <laughs> um, so uh, if you extrapolate that into you know, to the extreme, all you'd have to do is let these reservoirs sit here for long enough and they would clean themselves out and uh, have no germs left because of that, uh, that, diluting, that diluting effect. Uh, but of course they have a maximum. Um, I'm gonna slow that down. How come I can't make it stop? Okay, so, but they have a maximum amount of water. It's, it's five, uh, five tons. So when they get to five tons, it won't work anymore. Well, all that means is the, the polluted water will back up into this reservoir as well, and it will join the party doing the exact same thing. And um, the, the ultimate effect of all of these reservoirs uh, killing the germs and diluting the germs and passing them to each other is that the, the, all of the polluted water coming in will be sanitized as it runs through these three reservoirs. So I'm just going to speed that up and let you watch it. There it goes. We're getting a little bit of overflow over here now. You see it? It's backing up all the way to the first thing. Oh, oh, we started getting some clean, some clean polluted water coming out, germ-free. And this is about what it looks like. This is typical. You'll see um, that it'll be germ-free for a while, and, and then it'll send some backwards to the loop. And then, but after a little while, after doing that a few times, it will just be germ-free permanently. And it's just because it finally will have enough, enough uh, water in these reservoirs that the germs, uh, being diluted and killed and moving and being diluted and, and <laughs> averaged and stuff. And that, you know, the point is um, the sum of all those things kills all of the germs as it runs through this. And that's it. Of course, if you take these pipes and you cram them all together like I had them before, you can use up much less space. Um, I only used one. Um, one kilogram per tile of chlorine. Actually, apparently it's less than that. Uh, so you don't you don't need much chlorine to make it work. 